Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Factorio Friday Facts. I'm Exterminator, and thanks for tuning in again. Uh, today we're looking at 388 Smaller Things for 2.0. Uh, so this is a pretty short Friday Facts, and uh, I'm going to do a decent amount of summarization. There's, there's honestly just not a ton of... Uh, like long text here anyway, but this is really good stuff. So it's all like quality of life improvements and you know me I'm a big fan of quality of life at first when I just like read start reading this I thought it wouldn't be you know p particularly uh, Interesting or impactful, but this is actually really really great stuff So I do recommend sticking around or going and reading this uh, on your own. So we'll start off here uh, Billions of years worth of factorio uh, this far fact is written by Cobrex Regard and Clonin uh, so this whole section basically just goes into the fact that they've been using a normal 32-bit unassigned integer to track the number of ticks passed, and they figured that would be enough for everyone. So basically how we have it now is there's 60 ticks per second, which makes it 2.2 years of continuous playing on a single game save. But Factorio is, of course, a game about automation, so it was inevitable that someone would leave their Factory running in the background and eventually overflow the tick counter, uh, which there's a forum post here about someone doing that. This obviously will not do. So in 1.1, uh, basically Boss Cut already did some work to make it easier to transition to a 64-bit unassigned integer and uh, made it not as painful then to do that in 2.0. And that allows for a save file time of 9.7 billion years. So, you know, I can think that should probably be enough, right? Like, uh, that's uh, basically the universe. So, that, that, you know, the edge of the universe is probably fine, again. Um, so it was pretty straightforward. Now, the problem they did run into here is that uh, they use Lua 5.2, but the thing is, is it only has a single number uh, type implemented as a double precision. I, like, I don't really know what any of this means, but essentially it means that they're actually limited more by the uh, Lua, which is 2.37 million years, and that is fine like <laughs> obviously it's a very small amount of the potential but more than two million years seems to be enough i mean obviously like like <laughs> this whole thing is just humorous this is this is fantastic but like really uh honestly anything more than probably like five or ten years would be sufficient but this is just more than enough anyway so this is awesome the rest of the stuff is like actual really noticeable in-game quality of life things so logistic requests enabled tweak related to recovering corpse. So this is something that I, I kind of struggle with and, and get annoyed with, and it seems like they did too, uh, where essentially they have it where when you die, your logistic requests turn off when you respawn, which makes sense. That part's good, right? Because that means that that way you're not getting refills of all the stuff that's on your body that you're about to go get, and then you can't pick up stuff on your body because you already have doubles of it that you were given, right? If it didn't turn off. The issue, though, is that a lot of times is you go and get your body, but then you don't remember to turn it back on. Uh, so they've changed that. So now when you recover your corpse, the settings you had before dying are reinstated. So it will automatically uh, re-enable all your logistic requests that you had before dying, which is awesome because then you don't have to remember to do it. It just turns off and then boom, turns back on when you get your body. Right. So that's really good. And then smart, uh, smart number format. And this one may seem like not super helpful to, to some people or at first, uh, but I think there's gonna be some really, really good uses with this. And uh, anyone who's you know really good with the circuit network and, and mathematics and all that is probably gonna figure out some super neat stuff you can do with this. So oftentimes uh, you want to set some constant number, like I want seven and a half stacks here doing the calculation manually is of course unacceptable. So we made it uh, basically that you can type a mathematic expression directly into the text fields. So, I mean, yeah, so they give an example. So they say uh, that you can see here, basically the nice thing with this, the, the really nice thing is that uh, they, they've now designed, made it so you can divide, uh, define some constants uh, like number wise based on essentially abbreviation. So K for a thousand, M for a million, and so on. And parse the text when confirmed by the player, this means you can do different things. So you can see here. So you could do, you know, they showed in that example, you could do like 10 times 50 K, you know, which would be 500,000 or 10 plus 50 or, you know, 10 to the sixth power. Which I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> it's a lot. 
Uh, but yeah, you can see in that they had an example before where it was, um, where it was like one million, so one million divided by, uh, or, and then you can put like parentheses in here and stuff, two plus five. So you can do all kind of stuff to just get this actual large in number without having to necessarily, uh, manually calculate it. Although you're kind of doing that just by putting in the thing in a way but uh like i said there's going to be some really cool stuff i think you can do with this for for basic things like stack sizes uh it will be nice but i don't know that it is that game changing because like everything stacks in super easy numbers to calculate like 50 100 200 so you know if you want seven stacks of something that stacks in 100 it's 700 or or something stacked in 200 is 1400 like you can do that math super easily in your head but uh there, there are other uses it's not by any means a bad thing this is great i think people are going to be able to do some really really neat stuff with this moving down uh max range indicator so this is mostly a, a visual thing uh but essentially they go into the fact that sometimes it can be hard particularly with the higher level belts when building undergrounds or with pipes to just visually tell and memorize what the max distance is so with yellow undergrounds it's it's pretty easy because it's just four and it's pretty easy you use those a lot and you know you can like memorize like visually the distance to see what's max distance once you start getting into like six and eight for the red and blue belt respectively then they say it's hard to train the visual in, uh, intuition about how far they reach so now what they've done if they is they've changed it so that this is like what will be in 2.0 and this is what we have now is it will turn green when it's reached its maximum distance so you know it's you still obviously have to look but it's very easy to be like okay well this changes from yellow to green this is the max distance it goes so this is super nice uh just again really really nice visual change uh just makes the whole gameplay smoother another one that i think a lot of people are going to like is the chart tags improvement. So Strange Pan uh, spent some time improving the features of the custom chart tags. We now have the ability to quickly drag them around, <clears throat> excuse me, copy them by using the pipette key binding, which is fantastic, and put them down even when zoomed in so you can get the perfect alignment. So this is really nice, particularly my favorite, I think, is the copying them. Uh, because to my knowledge, you had to like actually go in. So, so if you, you could like click on it, choose one, and make one but then if you want to make more you would have to do that every single time like click again select the thing confirm whatever uh, but now you can just make one and if you want more than one of that you can just Q or whatever your hotkey is for the pipette tool over it and just copy it boom 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 and then move them around align them whatever you want to do so this i think is is really really great and some people a lot of people are going to really enjoy uh, this improvement and then another one is with save files, so save sorting. Uh, basically quite an obvious call as well. We now show the last time modified in the load slash save game dialog and have the button to switch sorting between alphabetical and most recent. So this is also really great. By default now it's, well, <laughs> by default, but the, the only option now is alphabetical to my knowledge. So uh, they just sort alphabetical, which is fine. Uh, but if you want to just always have, you know, your most recent one at the top to use a click, you can just sort by time modified, which is awesome. And then this one too, I think is going to be really, really well liked and used a lot is manual lamp colors. So before, if you wanted to set lamps to a different color other than the default, like white or whatever, uh, you had to use a combinator, which wasn't super hard. You just take a constant, like even for someone like me, who's very incompetent with the circuit network, uh, you would just take a constant combinator, go into the signals and choose a color and have it output that and then connect it to a lamp and, or something like that. I haven't done it in a long time, but it was super simple, even for someone like me, who's, who's terrible with the circuit network. Uh, but now you don't even need to do that. Now you can just go in here and choose the RGB colors, just like you could with a locomotive or a train stop. And uh, I would imagine you could probably copy paste these two. I, I, I can't imagine that the devs wouldn't have thought of that. Uh, so you, you can probably set it. And if you just want like a much the same color, you can just set one and then copy paste over all the others uh, or blueprint it if you want, uh, you know, to get that in there. Uh, but now you and you can also become much more finely detailed with the colors. So you can see here, they say uh, naturally also allows many colors not possible with the circuit network. So you can do basically any color you can imagine with RGB, uh, which is which is awesome. 
And then lastly, I think this is last, is the colors of robots on the map. So they give an example where it can happen that uh, some of your personal robots, construction robots, get left behind and forgotten. They quickly run out of electricity, and then their low energy slow mode is often too little to ever catch you again. Such a sad fate. And I have this happen constantly. <laughs> and usually I just say, screw you guys, you're too slow, I'm leaving you behind. Uh, so this is where they added more colors to the robot in the map visualization. So the green ones are your personal robots, you can see down here. Uh, and then you can relatively easily find the lost souls this way. There are also other colors for other situations such as logistics ro uh, robots delivering to you, construction bots, uh, spiders, slash other players, etc. And then they say, can you guess which colors mean what? Uh, not really. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think probably the... Uh... So clone in here, I would assume... Like maybe these are logistic robots. I don't know. I mean, this is actually probably pretty obvious to some people, but my brain's not able to figure it out. I mean, these look like construction bots because they're building this ghost over here. So, so these are probably just network construction bots. The green ones are, you know, cloning construction bots, uh, and then the uh, white ones I would assume are maybe logistic bots. Would be my guess. Uh, the red ones, I'm not 100% sure on what that is, maybe spider. Uh, and then, oh, so so there was another one. It's, uh, smarter deconstruction planner plus force building. Uh, Clev explosives are now, well, in 2.0, they won't be unlocked uh, until even later. So they're not unlocked from the start of the game anyway, but uh, with the expansion, they'll be even later down the road. I think you have to get to uh, Vulcanist to unlock them and to avoid nonsen nonsensical marking of cliffs for deconstruction when you force build on top of them, they change it so the cliffs are only marked for deconstruction once the cliff explosives have been researched. So that's fine. Uh, and then cliffs are ignored for deconstruction when you don't have cliffs explosives unlocked. You can see that. It also applies to the super force building whereby it won't try to place landfill unless you have it unlocked. So uh, this, I mean, that's fine. Like this just means, you know, it's just kind of less clutter to have cliffs marked for decon before you can decon them. Uh, personally, again, I'm not a huge fan of them. This is a separate tangent, but I'm not a huge fan of them moving cliff explosives later. I really, really hope they will allow you to um, do your cliff settings or, or general map settings on a per planet basis. I feel like they have to, right? Because I doubt, I doubt it would be a thing where you just set your resources and cliffs and trees and that just applies to every planet equally. Uh, I, I, I hope and I feel like they would have a way to allow you to set your map settings on a per planet basis because like I want cliffs on for Vulcanist because that sounds like you know pretty big gameplay part of it potentially but I don't want cliffs on for novice if I can't get rid of them until I've gone to another planet like that's going to be super annoying so I hope you can do it on a per planet basis if not I'm probably just going to have cliffs off 100% of the time uh, which is unfortunate but I do trust the devs that, that they've thought through this and, and we'll have the option to do it separately. Uh, but there you go. That's the Friday Facts. Uh, like I said, pretty short one, uh, but really, really good quality of life stuff, even though this isn't like mind blowing visual, you know, volcanic planet in, in, in foundries and stuff. Uh, all these quality of life improvements are just absolutely fantastic. And they add up really quick. Like just all the quality of life we've already seen, this one, what's to come on top of this, even though we haven't seen, it all adds up to just make the gameplay so much better and smoother and enjoyable. It makes you think, why did we not have this the whole time, right? So uh, this is super exciting. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite one of these things is, uh, You know, which one you think you may get the most use out of. As always, I really enjoy reading your thoughts. And uh, if you did enjoy, a like is appreciated as well. And if you're new, uh, welcome to the channel and feel free to subscribe to keep up with future notifications uh, and, and content. And uh, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and to take care.